Greg, most of the mathematicians I talk to, certainly the physicists also, say that math is, is at the foundation of reality, that it is, uh, uh, exists in a platonic world, that it is, is the perfect expression of reality. What do you say? Well, is it invented or discovered? You know, when you find, when you're a mathematician and you find something that feels really fundamental, you may think that if you hadn't found it, somebody else would, because in some sense it's got to, it's got to be there. But some mathematics feels much more contrived, you know, like an exercise that you do to be able to publish a paper. So I would say that there's an element, from that point of view, there's an element of truth in each. But then there's the question of, I, I, I sort of, I think both ideas, I sort of swing both ways on this. But that's okay. You know, we all recognize there's a lot of things that are, that are invented in papers. The question is, is anything in mathematics truly discovered, truly sitting there forever? Is there anything of that nature or is everything sort of an approximation that our senses sort of perceive in the universe? That's the question. Is there anything in mathematics that's so fundamental that it's discovered? Well. I, I think that a lot of us mathematicians, we may not want to confess this. You know, in the philosophy community, Plato's view that there exists a world of ideas, of perfect ideas, separate from the physical world, that's, I, call, I think, is called idealism, or it used to be called idealism, you know, that there's a world of ideas. I think in the world of philosophy, this is viewed as very... But I think if you look into the inner recesses of the unconscious of a lot of mathematicians, and I include myself... I think, in a way, we have this theological medieval belief. We believe in this world of ideas, in this platonic world of perfect ideas, of mathematical concepts. Otherwise, we're wasting our lives. You know, why are we... Well, there's nothing wrong with... Is it all a game? Is it all a game that we just invent as we go along? There's nothing wrong with that, if that's well, true. Well, some people, for some... I want, to, I want to know what's true. I don't, know what, I don't want to make you happy. Well, there are some kind of math... Some kind of... Some fields of mathematics that I don't like, I won't mention any names, I think are probably invented, not discovered. But one likes to, to have the fantasy, you know, I'd like to have the fantasy that I haven't thrown my life away completely and I didn't just invent it and it expresses some kind of fundamental reality out there. Um, Gödel had a very strong position on these kind of things. There's a, can I tell you a funny story? I, th sure. I don't know if it's relevant. I think it is a little relevant. It's a very good story. I like funny stories. <laughs> okay, well, here's the story. I don't know, I'll ruin it. But the story yeah. is somebody, I think an astrophysicist, is at a dinner at the Princeton Institute for Advanced Study, mm -hmm. a formal dinner with sponsors, I don't know who else. And he's sitting next to Gödel. So he thinks this is an incredible opportunity. Most people don't get to talk to Gödel. They're dinner companions. So this astrophysicist tells Gettle about, he, you know, just break the ice, he tells Gettle about some fantastic thing that, I don't know, he or some astrophysicist has come up with. You know, really a step forward that he's very proud of, and he thinks Gettle's going to have to agree, and this is going to be a good beginning for a conversation with the great man, you know, by showing that astrophysics also <laughs> is a worthy subject. So Gettle listens, he go, the astrophysics says, talks about this great new discovery, and, and then, then he stops to, you know, give Gettle a chance to react. <laughs> Gettle is listening. And Gödel says, I don't believe in empirical science. I only believe in a priori truths. Oh. End of conversation. <laughs> Not one word between the two of them the whole rest of the dinner. So that's a pretty extreme position. But in a way, that's what we pure mathematicians do in a way. That the, 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 the world of, of, of observation is, in a sense, trivial meaningless uh, uh, compared to, to the world of, of, of fundamental mathematical reality. I wouldn't say the real world is trivial <laughs> since we're there, but I, it's separate. It's independent. And I would say the pure math is independent of the physical world. It's a separate reality. I don't know where it is. Don't ask me where the positive integers live. <laughs> but they don't live here, I don't think. I mean, otherwise, why do we spend our lives obsessed with these numbers and trying to find out the truth about them? But starting from this point of view, uh, and Ghetto, I think, has this point of view, and I, I think I started with this point of view. You know, it's like a religion in a way. Ghetto says in one of his unpublished essays that got published after he died, he says it very clearly. 
he is against empirical uh, truth and against the empirical sciences. And he says the only place where the kind of, where medieval theology survives is really pure math is the closest to that. Hmm. And people are trying to destroy it, he says. But he wants to keep it pure in the world of ideas. And in a way, it's like a subject that is stuck in uh, the Middle Ages, you know? I mean, in a way, I would say, to be provocative, every pure mathematician who really believes in the subject, in a way, you know, their thoughts are in the mind of God. I mean, where are these? Where is the subject? It's not here. So you believe in some invisible world, better than ours, purer. This is beginning mm -hmm. to sound a little religious, mm -hmm. isn't it? In some, it's a strange form of religion, but it's... Does that upset you, that it sounds religious? You sound, no. you sound defensive. Well, given the current situation, one has to sound defensive. I don't know what my position on that is either, by the way. Well, who else should I ask? Oh, well, I was recently in a meeting about biology where there were some creationists and some bi normal bi Darwinian biologists. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was an interesting experience. But yeah, but, but that may be ir completely irrelevant to this discussion. I want to keep Well, you know, the belief matters. in absolute truth, the belief in truth, in a way, is a kind of a fantasy. Where is truth? Is it in this Wait, real is world? Is it a fantasy? Does it live in another world? Is it the mind of God? Is that just a metaphor? You mean that seriously? Well, I, I'm of two minds about it. Let's discuss those two minds that you have. Is mathematics something that's in a literal mind of God, or does it have nothing to do with God? Where is it, and, and, and how, how do we think about it? Okay, let me explain the strange turn that my own thinking had. I started off like a traditional math student, which is I believe in mathematical reality. So in a way that's saying mathematics is in the mind of God, it's perfect, okay? So I start off that way. And what is my final conclusion 40 years later? My final conclusion after a lifetime obsessed, totally obsessed <laughs> with all of this, you know, um, is that I think that mathematicians should behave a little bit more like experimental scientists do. And if, and if they do computer experiments and they see that something seems to be the case and they can't prove it, and this is a very useful truth, if it were true, then maybe they should add that as a new axiom. And admit that you're not going to be able to prove it in a traditional way. Give up on it. Now, a, mathematics, a mathematician will reel back in horror at this, but I think my work using complexity and the omega number, but all of that pushes in this direction. It's not completely convincing, but I see it as opening a door leading in this direction to say, my final conclusion is sort of like this. It's tentative, but you know, this is where I'm ended up. You have the world of physics. The world of physics, you have uh, experiments, which you do in a physics lab with physical devices. Mm. And based on that, you see that certain things seem to be the case. And you add new principles to physics as you go along. Physics adds new principles, right, to explain different phenomena. And I think that mathematics, the way around incompleteness and the fundamental limitation of ghetto, it seems to me, is to view mathematics the same way. I'll just change the language. In mathematics, our laboratory is the computer or calculation. And if you see that something seems to be the case by looking at many examples, and this is something very useful, this would be a principle that would be very useful if you were certain it was true, Maybe mathematicians should perhaps be pragmatic instead of demanding absolute truth and just add this new principle because it's so useful and mean? see where they get with it. And this is behaving like an experimental scientist would. It, it would seem then that human beings are, are, are kind of a co-participant in the creation then of mathematics. Well, yeah, in this case, in you go all the way from the, you start with the extreme view of perfect absolute truth, mathematics yeah. are thoughts in the mind of God, right. and then we create mathematics as we go. We're inventing it, to the, you go, because that's what a physicist does, empirical science. Right, right. Well, unless you believe that, well, if you're lucky, maybe our theories correspond to physical reality, but maybe there isn't much of a connection. And, and pure math would end up being just as tentative as, as empirical science. Something that we invent based how? On inspiration, on ex hints from experiment. Who knows where it comes from? Sometimes it's prejudices. Sometimes a physicist, you know, 
uh, is successful because the physicist has some prejudice, you know, for who knows what psychological reason, and it just happens to be the right prejudice at that moment to discover the next theory. But 20 years later, this same person would do, you know, would go in the exact wrong direction that you need at that time. Mm. So who knows where these ideas come from? So this is a very tentative and very position of a mathematical truth, very different from the normal one. And it's much closer to saying that we, we invent it than we discover it. But and I'm sort of... doing both, then that's a very interesting place that human beings have, where there is a, a core mathematical truth that exists someplace, mind of God in your terminology, uh, that existed forever, and, and we discover that, but also there's stuff we invent too, and the two work together. Well, I think... Using, yeah, the, the, the thing is, in my case, I was sort of forced against my will in the direction of saying that mathematics is empirical, or to put it in other words, we invent it as we go, but I'm forced to do this using reasoning, which is absolutely traditional platonic mathematical reasoning, which absolutely depends on believing in this absolute reality, in this perfect reality. So it's, in a way, it's like a ridiculous absurdum. In a way, it's... In, I would say the Gödel is the same story. In a way, our most cherished beliefs that we were so obsessed about and were so important for us psychologically contradicted, you know, ended up in an imploding. You know? So it's, it's sort of con contradictory psychologically to start with one, this position and then end up with the opposite position. So I don't know where we stand. In a way, it's a ridiculous absurdum of the traditional view of mathematics. Because if you believe in it, then you have to disagree with it. So where are we? I'm not <laughs> quite sure where we are. But so it's more like a novel than like a math paper.